My name is Daniel Schimpassel. I'm a Cloud Platform Architect at Red Hat. Today, I'm going to show you how you can import your existing virtual machines into OpenShift Virtualization. Any customer who wants to import many existing virtual machines to a new hypervisor faces the challenge of mass migration. With Migration Toolkit for Virtualization, we can automate this process. Let me show you how. So before we start looking at the demo of the migration, I want to share with you what we have set up. So what we have here is our HA proxy load balancer on top of our two Windows virtual machines that run IIS with a PHP web application. This particular web application is backed by a Linux box running our database. Now, when we open the web application, we can see a counter of each visit and which web server served the request. So we're toggling between WinWeb01 and WinWeb02. Migration Toolkit for Virtualization has two options for migration. A warm migration, where most of the data is copied before the VM is briefly shut down, before the final changes have been synced, and the VM is restarted on the new cluster. For this demo, we're going to use the cold migration where those virtual machines migrated are shut down, synchronized, and brought back up on the new hypervisor. Also, a quick tour about what we have set up in vSphere. We have our virtual machines. We have a network segment for our migration, as well as our data store ready to be mapped Let's take a look at the OpenShift cluster we're going to import those virtual machines into. On the overview screen, we can nicely see that we have a bare metal cluster and what version we're running. The Migration Toolkit for Virtualization extends the default installation of OpenShift via the operator framework. And in this case, we can see Migration Toolkit for Virtualization. Operator has been already installed. This operator extends our UI, and provides a migration menu option. For this migration, we're going to configure our providers, map our networking and storage from vSphere, and then create a plan for our migration. We're going to create our network map, give it a name, select our source provider that we configured VMware and our target provider host, which represents this OpenShift cluster. Our source network we have already available. I mentioned that earlier. And we have our target pod network. Now with all those elements in place, we can create our network map. Let's create the storage map. I'm going to give it a name, select our source provider and our target provider, define our source data store. And what we go now we created our both mappings and we can create a migration plan. Before we can create our migration plan, let's create a new namespace for our imported virtual machines. We're going to call it VM examples. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right. So we create a plan now, give it a name, select our source provider, target provider, and then a destination namespace. The good thing is with this version of MTV, you don't have to be a super user or admin to facilitate the migration. All right, let's go. Now we can choose the VMs we want to migrate. We do not need to migrate HA proxy since we can use the built in load balancer. Find the mapping. This looks good. Storage mapping. Looks good. And here we can do either a cold migration, like I mentioned before, all the VMs are already shut down, so we can do that. 
or one migration where we do an incremental copy and then a final cutover. We're not going to add additional hooks, which would allow us to run playbooks after the fact. Let's review. F3 VM selected, so that looks good. All right, let's finish. We have to select start to run the migration. Here we go. The data has been copied for all our VMs. Let's check out our virtual machines. Let's select our target namespace, which was VM examples. And here we go. We can see all the virtual machines. Before we can create our internal load balancer, we need to tag these virtual machines to be found with our selector. For this, we just make a small change to each VM's definition. and a second web server. Now that we tagged both VMs, we can use these tags in our selector. For this, we create a service, which is a load balancer. We find our namespace, as well as our selector to me. Let's start our virtual machines. Check our service has our endpoints. And as we can see, the selector matches. Now, before we can access our application, we need to make sure the web servers can access the database. For that, we have to create another route that matches our database instance. Let's go back to services, create another service. Now we have both services running, and we need to create a external facing route to our application. For this, we create a route, give it a name of our route web app, select the service we created, map our ports, and create our request. With the route in place, we can now check out if our web application is up and running. And it is. We can see it being served from WinWeb 02, and the counter is going up. Wonderful. So that concludes our demo. We can see that we migrated our virtual machines from vSphere to OpenShift virtualization, and it's fully functional with its internal load balancer. Thank you for your time.